Welcome to all the uh, classic car enthusiasts. Um, we've uh, put the cabling onto this a little bit better now and uh, done a few other things which I want to take you over and show you. It's working really well now. The only issue I've got with it now is, is this uh, pedal that operates the speed is actually from the toy lander which I'll show you in a second. It's a little bit flimsy. Um, and it's quite light, obviously it's for, for children. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, electronics of it out and make a, a, a bigger steel pedal with it that's got a bit more, uh, a heavier spring in it. But it can control quite, quite, quite well, so it's no problem. But uh, I've put a piece in here just now, um, and I can show you just roughly how it, how it, how it runs. You can see it's quite slow. And I've also got a switch down here, which I'll show you in a second, so I can run it back the other way. So the controllability is very good. Um, that's the that's a real good side of it. So, uh, and I wanted to show you a couple of little things, a couple of tricks, a couple of ideas that I've come up with. So I'll I'll pick the camera up and I'll show you what we what we've done. So you can see there, it's not brilliant, but there's the the bit that was in the Land Rover that runs it. These are the batteries I had with it. And we've now put this on uh, just to stop any flexing on these motors because there was a little bit of flex as you as you turned with, with heavier gauge steel in it. You can see it turning there. What we'll do now is strip it all down and, and uh, paint everything up. And there was a little bit of flex here when you used a heavier gauge like a two mil so but that stopped that happening now. Um, and you can see we've put a this is the switch on the little toy lander that you flicked up and down, so you want to go that way. You can see it. So I'll get out your light. You can see I can turn it very slowly. <coughs> but this is the pedal from the toy lander. You can see it's a little bit flimsy. Not very really good. So all we'll do is we'll take the guts of it out and build a new one but with a much heavier spring on it and then the controllability will be, will be better. Um, it's got a little uh, breaker switch there which actually snapped but never mind. Yeah, so it works pretty well. So this piece that I've just put through now, um, I did this a little bit early and you can see there on that profile, you can see this is the end of the, for instance if you were making a piece to strengthen it, a floor or a tank or whatever, you can see where the roller has come up to the end, where the bead has come, and it's not quite defined on the edge there. You can see it, and you can see on that end, it's a better defined. And I saw this idea on YouTube, YouTube's brilliant for this kind of stuff. And, and all you do is, is get uh, an open-ended spanner, which is, is the same, and you basically bang that down on the edge, beat it down, and you'll end up with that round profile there. So whatever size bead you're doing, for instance, I'll just turn this around the other way so you can see it. And you can see that, that works perfectly. And that's how you get a nice nice edge on it. Obviously you can work on it more than that. Um, I've, uh, so what I've done is I've come up with an idea now, and I need some help from you guys, especially the XK150 Jaguar guys. So we've rebuilt, uh, you remember in previous videos, these were all rotten inside, so we sandblast them inside. Uh, we built new fronts, new captive nuts, new tops for on both sides. I'll show you the other side so you can see it. You can see this side is done as well. So it's all new captive in here. And everything, we tried the battery boxes and they fit great. Now, the help I need from the guys out there, the Jaguar guys, or anybody else that might know, is on this car, this plate is actually the one not this side, it's on over there, but for filming I'll do it this side. And you can see that there was a little lip put on this. Obviously they've done it with some kind of bar and then, and then, uh, and then bent it over in a vise. And what's supposed to happen is, is this goes underneath there and then, he's, and then he's screwed down onto that. It's like a cover if you like. Yeah. Now, I'm not, I didn't have any on my car because it was, it was quite badly rusted. I think this is how they were made. So if you're an XK guy and you know 
that these covers exist. I'm pretty sure that that B post wasn't open like that. They must have had, because the debris build up there would be terrible. Anyway, so what I've done is I've come up with a little idea, because we've got the bead roller working now, is we'll use a, a smaller bead. This is just a, for instance, this is a, just the test piece we tried. And what I can do is actually use that profile there. You can see it's a good profile. And I can use that profile for it to catch and it looks even nicer. I think it's quite a nice idea. Um, because all these older cars, they all had uh, what they called wire edges. Um, if I can maybe show it you there better. You can see this is what they call a wired edge. This is a, there'll be a piece of rod in here. And then this fender or this uh, wing is wrapped around it. Um, and so that wired edge has got exactly the same profile I've got as a, as a bead. So that's that's the intention is to is to uh, is to do that. Yeah, so I'm just filming. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'll be there in a sec. No problem. I'll go, okay. be there in a minute. Sorry about that. <laughs> We've got guests around. We've got uh, six guests this weekend, so I haven't really done much on the cars. So anyway, there you go. So uh, this is how we're going to fit it. And what I'd like from the subscribers or anybody watching in who are an XK guy, I would imagine it came from there to there at least, and then the battery box comes up here. But if they know, if the if the cover goes further than that, could you let me know? Because I cannot find any pictures on YouTube or or, um, or the internet. I've been on Google. It's, it's an area that people don't seem to have very many photographs of. Okay, so the next thing uh, is I wanted to show you. You can see this is, was the original how that's uh, that's actually the other side but that's how that looked it's not come out very well but you can see how bad it was in there quite badly rusted um, the other thing I wanted to show you was this is a, a uh, an, an S type and you can see when we're having the same thing we've, we're using the original 3.4 engines but with uh, straight port uh, E type or, or S um, heads because the, the valves have to be a certain size and the triple SU carburetors which I have on my on my E-type there um, but you can see here that there's an issue with this last carburetor this one has an air box on it and we're not going to go, go with the air box inside the wing we're going to use pancake filters chrome pancake filters so again if anybody's done this conversion um, I'm not sure exactly how much needs to be cut out on this wing. So in fact, it would be this wing here we're looking at. This is upside down, obviously. And it looks to me like they need to be cut about here somewhere to allow this pancake filter. It's the pancake filter and the, the uh, fuel float, which seems to be a bit of an issue on that corner. You can just see, I know this is not really good, but you can just see there where it's cut on the S. Anyway, so if anybody's got any information on that, I really would appreciate it. And uh, we should be back to work tomorrow because uh, all the guests are leaving this afternoon. And, uh, and we'll go from there. So, yeah. Um, one last little tip with a bead roller. If you're doing a bead, and you can see this is the 2 mil stuff we've done. You can see the profile's pretty good and it's thick. You can see how thick that is. Um, <coughs> if, you're doing a, if you're doing one of these beads... And if you have an English wheel, if you're lucky enough, I mean, I've, I'm lucky, I've got this English wheel, okay, so it's a, it was a cheap version, but it does what I needed it to do. Um, it's a good idea when, you, when you're doing beads, is to, to, when you draw a line to make it, if you've, got a, if you've got an English wheel, just run it up and down a few times, and what it'll do is it'll pre-stretch the metal, and then when you put it through the bead roller, because you're taking this dip in it, um, the panel won't warp it'll keep the panel straight so that's a little tip that I've learnt again I get most of these from YouTube or uh, talking to somebody or, or just checking it out on Google so there's a couple of tips for today so she's all finished and working and I'm really chuffed especially the fact that these motors and batteries wouldn't have been used for 11 months of the year so because we took them d directly out of this uh, out of this cup here which is this little uh, Land Rover I made for the for the nieces and nephews. Anyway, take care. Bye for now. Bye.